Hello everyone, Jonathan Alfonso, and welcome to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. If I could just ask you for a favor, if you guys could like, subscribe below. If you like the content that you see today and all the coming videos, we'd really appreciate it. Leave us a comment. We would love to engage in conversation with you. So today I am covering the number one question. The number one thing everybody's telling me is the market going to crash? Are we going to have a housing market crash? Is real estate going to crumble in the United States? Now, the question is, why am I making this video? Number one, it's for everyone in my sphere that keeps asking me and for all of you, because I go on YouTube and I see every other video is about the, the coming housing market crash. And then when I start to watch the video, I'm realizing these people really aren't saying anything. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons is, which is getting into my main point is I've watched all these videos and I'm listening to all these people talk and everybody's talking housing market crash. And the most important question I don't see anybody answering to an extent is how are they defining a market crash? So I went into a little wormhole and I don't want to you know, bother everyone with all the economics and all the economic, all the way economists, right, would define a housing market crash because I really couldn't find any consensus. So for purposes of doing this video and not wasting too much of your time on, you know, boring stats, we're going to define a housing market crash as whether the housing market in a 12 month period will suffer a 20% reduction, right? That would be if housing prices went from 400,000 to $320,000 in a certain area, that would be a calamity um, for individuals living in those communities, right? Um, the next thing that I want to address quickly before I go into my prediction is why am I qualified, right? What makes Jonathan Alfonso, this guy making a YouTube video qualified to even make this prediction? Well, Number one, compared to a lot of people that I've seen, I, I, I feel I'm just as qualified, if not more. And the reason is, it's very simple. I spend my day talking to realtors. I spend my days talking to buyers and sellers, lenders. I mean, I spend my day just in the thick of the real estate arena. And, you know, I remember going back to the last housing market, quote unquote, crash, right? 2008, which was probably the greatest crash any any of us will ever see is I just remember all the conversations I was having all the time. Everybody was calling me. I'm losing my home. I don't know what to do. I mean, I had people I didn't even imagine would call me and they'd be like, hey, Jonathan, um, I have like six homes. I don't know what to do. And I'm not seeing any of that today. Right. And, you know, that's why, you know, and I'm going to get into all the various reasons why. And I hope you stay to the very end because I have some amazing you know, data to share with you as far as what's going on specifically in the Miami-Dade market. But I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to give you my prediction. In 2021 and 2022, so I do not predict that there will be a housing market crash. In other words, when we look at the data come December 2022, I do not think we're going to be looking at the market and saying, wow, housing prices declined by 20% um, going back to December of 2021. So in a 12-month running period, I just don't see it, right? Now, I will give one caveat to my prediction, right? Because I know there's always that one person out there who wants to say, gotcha. I mean, listen, is there some sub markets? You know, could the condo market in some small town in the Midwest that I've never heard of be suffering? Absolutely. I mean, we're even seeing that right now with New York and California, where you, you're seeing an exodus of individuals leaving those markets, moving to other states. So yes, some markets are going to suffer um, and some markets are going to have... Um, price reductions and they're going to see prices decline. They're going to see inventory soften up. I see a lot of that happening, but you know, a lot of my prediction is based kind of on what I see going on throughout in, in the entirety of the United States. And I will say when it comes to my market, which is, you know, I really, I'm in, I'm in Miami Dade County, Florida. I, I live in the heart. I, I live right outside Coral Gables, Florida. I mean, in the heart of South Florida, I just don't see the whole South Florida market at all having any sorts of these issues. Now, why am I making this prediction and how, how did I arrive here, right? It's very simple. It's a supply and demand issue. Right now, when you look across the United States, there is a 60% reduction in inventory. Very simply said is usually, and, and th these are not the exact numbers, but there's approximately 1 million homes on the market every January of every year, right? Now, we all know that throughout the year, the inventory levels will rise and fall depending on seasons, right? Usually like the end of the school year will affect. December is traditionally a slower month because you know a lot of people start heading out on vacation and people start putting things off towards the following year, but it's supply and demand. We have 60% less inventory. That's right. Where we would traditionally have a million homes on the market, we have approximately 400,000. So it's a supply and demand issue. Now, 
it's funny enough. I had saved this a while ago. This is an issue of the economist from, and if, if you guys can see that right there, this is from January of last year. And they were talking about the housing deficit that we had in this country and all the different issues. And they, they go into, they, I mean, it was really an amazing expose piece, whatever you want to call it. And I remember reading that and, and it touched on a lot of things that, that we knew. See, first, we had a supply issue that's been running with us going back to the last housing crisis. Believe it or not, regardless of everything that happened then, see, it, it, it makes very simple sense from 2008 through approximately 2014, home builders had slowed down their production. There were so many homes, prices had declined so much that home builders weren't building at the levels that they were traditionally building. Now that started to pick up in recent years, but we already had kind of this little bubbling in the market going back to last year, right? Where we were short on new homes being built and we were, we were already we were already there, right? And now when we look at it in retrospect, right? When we see everything that happened during COVID, it makes perfect sense, right? Because then COVID came and it just threw gas and lit a fire on the entire situation. The next issue then becomes, right, the demand. Now, there's a couple of things and, and, and I plan on doing some follow-up videos where I can dive a lot more into this data. But right now, I'll just broadly speaking, touch on a couple of things. Number one, we had an entire, we have an entire generation of millennials that have been putting off home ownership, right? Now, we have the most number of 26, 27, 28 year olds in this country that we've ever had. And a lot of these individuals have been putting off buying a home. Now, throw COVID in the mix where everybody's being confined to their home, people are reevaluating their situation. And a lot of these people have decided to come off the sidelines, stop renting, and decide to start purchasing a home. Now, I understand that on the macro level, we have some major economic issues. We have a lot of people that have lost their jobs, but by the same token, there was still a lot of people that had purchasing power that were putting off, that were not laid off and decided this was the opportunity for them to come off the fence because they wanted to go out and finally have their housing situation stable, right? So you had you had all these people come into the market. You had a lot of people decide to leave whatever apartment buildings they were in. And that's why, especially my prediction for the single family side, and I'll dive into some data of the Miami market. When it comes to the single family side, there has never been a greater demand for that single family home out in the suburbs. In fact, I even remember about 18 months ago, telling people that I was seeing a trend where people were trying to move closer into the dense cities because they didn't want to commute to work. Well, guess what? COVID came, work from home came, and that just obliterated everything that we had going on. Now, what else factored into the demand? Interest rates. Now, by the Fed lowering the rates, by everything that's happened in the economy, by the trickling down effect of everything that's happened is we have the most historically low rates. I mean, we have the historic lows, right, of rates. I remember two years ago, I saw someone get a purchase at 3.25%, and I thought that was crazy. And I thought I would never see anything like that. And now I'm in an environment where I'm looking at closing statements every day, and people are closing at 2.75, 2.8%, like, like it's a normal thing. And some people now are getting even lower than that with the rates they, they locked in 45 days ago. So the interest rates came in and automatically increased everybody's purchasing power. N not to mention that it increases their purchasing power, right? It locks them into historic lows, right? And who wouldn't want to do that? Now, this also has another effect. Not only does it help fuel the demand, it is also going to create a long I don't want to say a long standing, but it's going to create an effect throughout time because there are a number of people who also purchased in the last three to five years who may have thought about upgrading their home and are just saying, you know what, I'm going to refinance, lock in these historic lows and I'm just going to move and I'm just going to stay in my house. So we have we have gone now. The statistics were more or less that an individual would stay in their home to an average of about seven years now over time. And I had see, I've seen conflicting data, but it's moved to now people will stay in their home an average of 12 to 13 years is some of the different data that I've seen. Now, what is a conclusion? People are staying in their homes longer. I would bet that 
with people locking in these historic lows over the last 12 months and continuing to continuing to do so for moving forward, you're going to see a lot of people who may have been sellers who will say, you know what, I'm going to just refinance my home, lock in this historic low for 30 years, and they're not going anywhere. And that's inventory that would have otherwise come to the market, right? What do we, what do we have? A net effect of less sellers. Now, what's the next thing that's affecting the market? The foreclosures. Now, I know this is the big one because everybody likes to harp on it. And I do plan on doing a further video going into the inventory levels of what we see. And yes, there are a historic number of people that are that have you know applied for forbearance on their loans. And once again, I am not mitigating the impact of what is going on. I, you know, I definitely definitely understand that a lot of people have lost their jobs and I do, you know, empathize with those individuals, but I'm here to give you the data and what I see. Right. And the reality is a lot of these people that have taken into forbearance, number one, we don't have clear data on how many of these people are just taking the forbearance because that makes sense right now. Some people may have been saying, you know what? Things could get dicey. Let me just take this forbearance plan. Let me keep my mortgage payment money here on the side and let me see what happens. I understand there's another effect that there's a whole slew of people who may mismanage that. But the reality is that based on the, you know, the latest um, Biden plan, they are going to extend the foreclosure moratorium until September 2021. So what does that look like? That means it's, it's going to be at least January of 2022 before people start having their homes foreclosed on. That means we're a year away and we're going to be in this current situation. All the meanwhile, homes are just going to increase and in, increase in price. And here I'll give you another prediction of mine. I, I am of the belief that all these homes are not going to come to the market in foreclosures like everybody is trying to predict. I do think there's going to be some incentive given by the government to help these people you know, rehabilitate their mortgage with their lenders. And that's not going to happen. You have to remember just even... In a lot of markets, there's been a five to 10% appreciation, right? In the home in the last 12 months, all these people that are in foreclosure have equity. They're going to figure out how to protect that equity. They're not going to turn around and give it for pennies on the dollar. This is completely different than 2008. So my prediction is when it comes to that foreclosure crisis, it's only helping to fuel this, you know, decrease in inventory and it's helping to keep homes off the market. And by by virtue of the fact that we're extending the moratorium on, until September, it's only going to continue further into the future. And, you know, what is the last thing that I believe is fueling a lot of this? It's the transition, right? We It's all of these people that are moving from different markets. You have people, for example, in South Florida, I have never spoken to as many New Yorkers as I have in the last 12 months who just find us online, who are buyers and sellers of homes and, um, and are moving to our market. And remember, these individuals come from affluent markets, which is another thing that people are not factoring in with what's going on with the transition is the people that are leaving some of these, some of these major markets that are relocating elsewhere, think about it. They're affluent individuals who are coming in and purchasing homes. And so they're really straining even the higher end of the inventory, but that's kind of trickling down to the lower price points. So when you have all these people moving and transitioning to new markets, that's, that's helping to fuel a lot of the uh, decrease in inventory that we're seeing. So with that being said, you have my prediction there. I don't see a housing market crash, definitely not in 2021, and I do not see it coming in 2022. But even to, you know, give you some more data, I wanted to I wanted it to especially for those those viewers of mine that are in the South Florida area. Here's here's an interesting stat that that I um I started tracking. So most of the closings that we see here are around the $500,000 price point. So starting about 3 weeks ago, I on starting on on Mondays, I was tracking how many single family homes in Miami-Dade County are on the market, right? Now you have to understand Miami-Dade County has 2.7 million residents, right? Now, 300 to 500 thousand dollars is one of the most active price points. I mean, that is where the median price of a home is in this in this county, right? Well, guess what? As of three weeks ago, there was 885 active homes for sale. I mean, that is absurdly low. All right. Then I tracked it two weeks ago. It was actually less. It was 880 homes. And today, January 24th, which is a Sunday that I came in to record this video, there are 845 homes. So the inventory is only getting lower. Now, I do predict this is going to get better. I think a lot of people 
took December off. You know, 2020 was a very taxing year emotionally for a lot of people with everything that was going on. So I think people have tabled it. I think now people are having conversations with their realtors about listing their homes. Then they're going to start photographing, preparing, preparing to come to market. And I think we will start to see the situation alleviate somewhat um, come March. But for right now, I mean, we have an absurdly low number. Here's another crazy t statistic of what's going on in the single family home market in Miami-Dade County. In November of 2019, there were 3,000, I'm sorry, there were 6,526 homes, all right, on the market. You know how many there were in November of 2020? 3,589. I mean, that is just, that's half the inventory that would traditionally be on the market. So there you have it, folks. With these supply and demand issues, I just don't see how we have a housing market crash in 2021, regardless what all these headlines and all these news articles are saying, because it's not just there. If the inventory levels are this low right now, people are now having conversations with their realtors. That means they're not listing their properties until at least March, right? They start to market, they start to negotiate. These closings won't start to happen until at least May of this year. All right, which leaves us with six six months left until the end of the year. Where's the housing market crash going to come? Is everybody just going to decide out of nowhere to sell their property for 10% less than they would and start to cause like a price reduction war? It's absolutely not going to happen. In fact, it's going to happen the other way. And if you're uh, if you're if you're if you're on the fence right now and if you're thinking that, you know, this is a doom and gloom scenario, I invite you to, you know, to reach out to us. I would love to have a conversation with you to see if you're seeing something different than what I am. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching this video on our channel. Once again, please hit that like and subscribe button below. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them. And I look forward to making more videos for you guys.